Pokemon's Gaming. Hi there, my friends. Um, well, I've I had some inspiration um, from our good comrade, Dread Lun. If you don't know who Dread is, link down below in the doobly doo. Go and check the fella out. But he has just made um, a cobblestone road. And I've been wanting to do this for God knows how long, for particularly for Empire of the Dead, but also just because I like cobblestones. There's tons of cobblestones roads um, throughout Scotland, as there probably are throughout the rest of the world as well. Um, but for some reason, I like cobblestones, um, just as I like field stone walls. But I've not known how to go on about it, and I've seen lots of different ways. Um, the one that... I leant towards the most was getting old paint brushes, debristling them and making them into shapers to make your cobblestones. But it's still going to be um, a hefty sculpting job. And I'm not the greatest of sculptor, I'm not a Van Hammer. Um, and Dread has come up with an absolutely awesome way that I'm so glad he showed to us. And it's create a negative. Um, so rather than trying to sculpt the actual cobblestones, you make a negative using some cast or sculpted pieces, uh, meaning you need a few pieces to make up a massive section. So I'm going to give that attempt, and what I'm using is I got out my hearst bricks and then started chopping and cutting and grinding and sanding and anything else I could to do with these to bring them down to sizes that I could use as cobblestones. I have also got some of my other hearse bricks, so I can use that, say, as a curb stone or a side piece with the larger ones because they're going to be slightly too large as a cobble. Some of my sci fi pieces as well from Hurst will make excellent drain covers, which I can press in to make a negative and possibly even a huge manhole. Um, so, as Dread suggested, you put them on some sort of product. So, I've inserted them into cocktail sticks and um, just a very small hole drilled into them. Um, you need to be careful when you're drilling the plaster because they do want to crack but if you take your time and go really slowly you can get there um, it's a bit time consuming as well so I've got all my various different sizes of cobblestones I've got some drain pieces um, and curb stones I've got some new plaster in the oven just now just softening it up I've never tried that I think you can hear it beeping in the background so I'm going to have to go and get it in case it's melting into a slag because that's my first checkpoint to see how it's doing um, and then I'm going to roll it out on here nice and flat and let it cool a bit before starting doing some impressions. Back shortly. So that's the new plaster out of the oven. First part of it rolled but I didn't get enough out so I'm going to put this back in the oven to re-soften it. Um, at 80 degrees this stuff isn't pleasant to touch, you need to let it cool but it cools really quickly. There's still a bit of heat in there but it becomes difficult to work. Um, so I'm going to stick it back in the oven, let it soften up, roll this out again um, using the roller. Um, it's a sculpy one we've got, they ain't cheap but they're nice, um, good size rather than a kitchen roller and we'll take it from there. So that's me get my slab of new plast rolled out and onto a bit of hardboard which can then be attached to my moulding frames. So it's close enough now, it's nice and smooth pretty much all over, um, edges a little bit rough but they're going to get a little bit rough again when I join it to the frame because I've got this all the way to the edge. But that's the next thing I'm doing. Um, so we'll see you shortly. So that's my mould box fitted round my new plast. And I can now use this to make my negative. It's nice and smooth right up to the corners. Which means I shall work the negative pretty much most of the way right up to there. It certainly gives me the guide to the straight edge of where I need it to be. So pushing along with this, it's beginning to take form, beginning to take shape. I'm quite pleased with how it's going. And whilst we're doing that, we're watching a little bit of Terrainaholic. Um, and he's showing off some Heroclix figures that he's going to proxy in. So that's where we're at. So just over halfway through, making my impressions. It's time consuming. It's labour uh, intensive. But it's nowhere near labour intensive as it would be to sculpt all these babies. Um, I've said it already, but I'm saying it again, thank you very, very much, Dread. Um, so I'm getting there, and I'm going to keep pushing on. Well, wish me luck, team, especially you, Mr. Lun, because that's me got all my cobblestones down. The next thing I do is make my master, so I'll be pouring some plaster into this, 
but I just thought I would get in and show you all of these down. I've said it before, I'm saying it again, go check out Dreadlun if you don't know who he is. Well, fingers crossed this pour works out because I was completely blonde when I was putting this mould box together and I forgot to seal my edges. So all four edges of this mould box were unsealed. Yes, the clamps are and it puts a bit of pressure on it. But when you're talking a runny liquid like plaster, it's going to find the gaps. Especially when you pour it in and it comes pissing out all four corners and underneath. So I had a bit of a flood on my table of plaster, which I had to try and clean up whilst trying to retain as much as possible in the mould box. So this one here hasn't been vibrated, so there may well be plenty of air bubbles underneath. I just need to hope the quality of my pour was such that the air bubbles have been reduced. I've got tissues bunging up corners where there's still leaks happening, and I'm hoping that the plaster's setting. I've managed to clean up the worst of it off the table, then level this at the same time because I'm in a bit of a rush. Obviously, I'm excited by the project, but instead of doing things properly, I forgot to level this as well. So this is as fast a level as I could possibly do whilst cleaning up plaster that was flowing everywhere. So, fingers crossed that this works because the process destroys the negative. Um, and... I don't want to have to do it all again just for my first mould, um, but I might have to, so we'll take it from there. Let's see what happens when this plaster sets up. The other worrying thing is, I don't know if I've got my plaster mix right, it looks a bit wetter than it should do for this stage, which is suggesting to me I've mixed up the ratio of water to plaster as well. So I think anything that could go wrong on this particular one is going wrong. So we'll take it forward anyway. See you soon. So disaster averted. This is cured. I'm going to leave it a bit longer because the mix definitely looked wrong. Um, looked just too watery compared to the way I usually cast my stuff. Um, and as a result of an issue in this corner as well, which went all lumpy, is the bit up there dripped down and went into it and made a mess. But not too much leakage. Um, once I get it all sealed up, so there should be enough under here to do just going to be too much because I made more than I wanted because I was going to cast some of these as well. I was going to stick some of them in plaster to see how they come out, but it all get used in here um, after everything went wrong. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to let this dry. Um, normally it's only a half hour situation where I leave these, but I'm going to give it another hour or so because it just didn't look right and there's still a lot of damp patches in the plaster which I don't normally see so just to give it, give it as much strength as possible before I take off the uh, negative off it so I'll come back in an hour or so but be here instantaneously for you guys okay I'm probably sounding a little bit muted so hopefully you can hear me but I've taken the Dremel tool put a steel disc cutter on the end a bit like a grinding tool and I have cut along here. The reason you can't hear me and muffled as I'm in my gas mask. Um, hello all, hope you can see me. Um, but this is what I'm wearing because it kicks up an awful lot of dust. And this is just to protect my lungs. So, take care. Moving on to the next stage. So after dremeling the edges with the steel cutter, I have taken my file and I've just ran it along the edges here to file it to give a nice straight edge. I do have the issue of the depth of this is slightly different. So I've got some new plast cooking off in the oven. I know you're not supposed to do it with it but it works for softening it. So I can try and lay this on a bed of new plast and leave that nice and square and level once I've laid it. Um, thoughts for that process is so when I come to get my mould, my mould is nice and perfectly levelled. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do now. So I'm just going to work on getting my surface level. Then I'll put my new plast down. I'll roll it flat on a bit of hardboard. 
and from there try and lay this on top level and take a spirit across this and try and get this in a reasonably level position. So, I've managed to crack it twice, but I've put some glue in there to try and seal that up, so I'm just letting that dry off. Mounted it in the mould box and tried to level it, and it's as level as I can goddamn make it. Um, it's not bang on, but it's very damn close to being bang on, which is good enough for me for to make the mould. So once the seam lines there dry, because the glue will fill that nicely, hopefully, I can then get some uh, silicon in there and pour some resin. So I've gave the plaster a quick squirt of ease release, and uh, literally one or two seconds squirt, and then. Just brushed it onto the plaster, um, so that'll just hopefully prevent the silicon keying um, and stop the mould getting damaged. Oh, it's not a major concern, silicon is quite strong, but just keeps your silicon lasting longer if you take care of it. Um, so that's the stage I'm at, Dread, um, and anyone else that's watching, but I've said it already in this vid, but three times, four times, but I love the idea of the technique, hence why I'm doing it. Thanks again, Dread. So that's the commitment made, that's my silicon in and drying, so I've got four hours to wait for this baby to cure. This time round, unlike with my plaster, I remember to seal my edges. Um, I hopefully won't make that mistake again in a rush. So let's just wait and see. Everything looks pretty level along the size of my gates. So hopefully I've got my pores relatively level. Um, and as Dredd suggesting, when I pour my resin, I'm just looking for almost a veneer um, of resin underneath it, just so it's nice and thin. Um, to A, not use as much resin as I would have to, and B, just to keep the, the road surface, cobble surface, nice and close to the board. <laughs>